This is the small scale or micro scale electrolysis of copper 2 chloride solution. Uh, we'll be doing the electrolysis on a plastic sheet and the electrodes for the experiment are these two pencil leads here. Um, we'll also be supporting the plastic sheet on this white tile and the first thing to do is to set up the two electrodes and you need to be quite careful about this so that the crocodile clips do not break the pencil leads so you need to clamp those very carefully like so and then you can find by rotating the connection there and positioning carefully you can get the electrode flat on the plate or sheet I should say. Now for the second electrode again be careful and rotate and you need to position everything so that they can be quite close together there on the electrode sheet. You can see with a small gap between the electrodes we're in position now to uh, put a drop of copper 2 chloride so let's do that. So this is the copper 2 chloride solution that we will be electrolyzing and you can follow back the electrode here on the right hand side is the cathode and electrode here on the right hand side that's the anode according to the power pack. The power pack is set at 6 volts and we're ready to go. The next thing that we need to do is to get in a little bit closer so that we can see the experiment. We've got a petri dish here that we'll be using as a lid. We've got some uh, litmus paper and some potassium iodide and potassium bromide solution which uh, we will be also using. So if we move in a little bit closer and just rotate a little bit you can see what we're doing. So now, if we put the litmus paper here, and then we'll be putting a drop of potassium iodide and potassium bromide next to the solution. Here's first the potassium iodide. potassium bromide it's potassium bromide and finally to limit somewhat the diffusion of gases into the laboratory we cover the whole thing with a petri dish lid which should help the gases stay in where we want them to be. The last thing to do is to turn on the supply and that's what we're doing now. Well you should start to see evolution of bubbles of gas on the left hand side that's the anode and you may also be able to detect uh, a change in the electrode on the right hand side. But with this experiment, we also see a change in the potassium iodide and potassium bromide and the litmus paper.
um, numerous changes are visible in the uh, reacting system now and you should record those observations. Well, if we turn off the power and put the lid to one side on a damp tissue over here, we can review the changes that have occurred. We can see on the left-hand electrode here, the anode bubbles of gas, which smells like a swimming pool. On the right-hand electrode here, the cathode, we can see a dark solid, and you may be able to detect some coloration to that solid. It is, in fact, uh, brown in color. This is the potassium iodide, and that's turned a dark orange color. And this is the potassium bromide solution, and this has got some yellow coloration to it. The blue litmus paper over here first turned pink, and you can detect that it's starting to turn white. It's starting to bleach, in fact, at the edge here, and that would increase with time. Finally, the copper two chloride solution itself has got a lot paler in color. So there are various changes to explain in the electrolysis of copper 2 chloride and the other solutions that we've got on the plate surrounding it.